Okay. Happy Friday. Okay, let's continue. The last on the law would be the organization references that we actually use in pharmacy. Okay, so in the old days, of course, the references are required in hard copy like books each pharmacy should have this reference book should have a little library or a bookshelf where they keep their references but you guys know that everything is digitalized now so online softwares that pertain to those references are accessible before we talked about when we talk about references let me talk about the different organizations but we've been talking about them all the time and some of you reported EA, EA. So you guys know what it is. Let's just do a review. What's FDA? Food and Drug Administration. What do they do? They what? They monitor, they regulate, they approve, right? What else? Please call it right. But what's the big, like the first major thing that they do okay, on top of drug approval? Think about the first law, 1906. In the next, yeah, but that's the first law. So the Food and Drug Administration had something to do with food, drugs, and the 1938 with the addition of oh, cosmetics and other products such as tobacco, et cetera, et cetera. Good morning. And then we have what? The DEA. DEA is what? <laughs> She's not the DEA. She's raising her head. <laughs> Okay, so what's the DEA? Drug enforcement, what's the A? Administration, not agency, okay? So drug enforcement, what do they enforce? What do they do? Who are they? Regulate, what? Controlled substances or substances that are that have potential for abuse, okay? I talked about USP yesterday or the other day. Remember, you have to remember four USB chapters. I told you that. It's going to be USB 797, which is? Okay. So sterile compounding preparations. Okay. What's 795? Non-sterile non compounding preparations. What eight? What's 800? Managing hazardous materials or substances. And what's 1075? Good compounding practices. But who is USP? So the USP stands for United States Pharmacopeia. It's a nonprofit organization. We have an annual publication and it contains a list of all FDA approved drugs. But I always say that they all to check the quality and the purity of drugs. That's why if you notice some of your bottles will say USP. Okay, so it passed the USB standard. Okay. Next one would be NABP, which Stefan talked about. You remember how NABP is the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy? Okay, it actually, what, what practice, what profession does it standardize or check uh, the practice? The practice of pharmacy, so it regulates both pharmacists and pharmacy technicians. Then that's the mother, NABP under the NABP are different, so it's called National Association of Boards of Pharmacy. 
each of the state boards. Can you follow? And then the state boards of pharmacy. In our case, what do we call our state board of pharmacy? Nevada State Board of Pharmacy, California, the California State Board of Pharmacy. The website for us is bop.nv.gov. So if you move to California, it will be bop.ca.gov. Okay, that's where you find information. Okay, if you're moving to a different state, you just go to the State Board of Pharmacy of that particular state. That's how you find what are the requirements for you to register in that state as a technician. Okay. Does this state require national certification like the PTCE or the EXCPT or they accept both? Okay. Every time you move to a different state and you want to continue practicing as a pharmacy technician, even as a pharmacist, you check the state board's website first. Okay. Some states require you to be nationally certified. Next one. OSHA, what's OSHA? <laughs> Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Safety is the word, safety of employees or workers, okay? OSHA is that organization that tells the chefs that they have to have kid-proof shoes, okay? This is the reason why on dress down day, every time you receive that email, it will say if it's a lab day, make sure you Dress appropriately, meaning closed shoes. Why needles can accidentally fall. OSHA is the one that tells you how to, like, um, what do you do in case of spills or burns and stuff like that. Okay. All clear? CDC, who presented FDA. Okay. Um, Camille presented FDA, but the clinical trials part. Right. Okay. So we also talked about the CDER being under the um, FDA. What does the CDER do? It's not the same as the CDC. Remember when the pandemic was just like hit, we always look for guidance from not only the health department, but also the CDC. The CDC is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Okay. That's why every time um, your kids, your brothers, or your little brothers and your little sisters get vaccinated, they get this pretty pamphlet talking about the vaccine. And it's the CDC that put that together. Why? Look at the title. Look at the name of the organization. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And vaccine is supposedly preventative. That's clear? They're the ones that provide guidelines to help the public understand the diseases. But of course, at the beginning, because COVID virus, Corona virus was new. It's something new to them too. Okay. That's why we don't know which information is correct. We we're going to talk about organizations that we should refer to when it comes to disease prevention. CDC would be fine. Okay. Any questions before I move on? Oh, let's check and do this. What limit was set for the purchase of pseudoephedrine? We've been talking about this. Is it 30 day limit, 60 day limit, five gram per day limit, three grams per 30 day limit? 30 day limit because there's no 3.6 grams per day and there's no nine grams per month. So we'll see. True or false? In the Affordable Care Act, Coverage is available for children up to 26 years of age. I talked to you, some of you, about this. Yeah. This is my marker, this age. <laughs> what is yeah, one, one, one. <laughs> okay, the same about that. That's why I know the answer to this, but if I didn't cover it. Um, I'm getting kicked off my dad's insurance. <laughs> what? It is not, okay. So once you turn what, 26, 
not be claimed as a dependent anymore for health insurance, okay? <laughs> for health insurance and other matters. Say, when you come here, sometimes I talk to you guys and said, and you tell me you don't have health insurance. First thing I ask is how old are you? Okay. Why do I ask you that? Because I'll tell you next, your parents might be able to cover you if you're less than 26 years of age as a dependent. Same with your financial aid, okay? If you're under 26, you can still be under your parents. Your parents can help you pay for or get the loan in your behalf as their dependent. So once you hit 26, like you do things on your own. <laughs> like Jordan said, <laughs> she was kicked off by her dad. Okay, this um, month, next month, well, next March. Month. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so advance happy birthday to her. Not so fun <laughs> being twenty six, I guess. <laughs> Registration for the blank 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 is required to purchase, prescribe, and dispense controlled substances. Yeah. 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 False. The Affordable Care Act coverage is available for children up to 26 years old. Why? Because you're turning 26. Uh -huh. So up to? Well, 25. It's supposed to be 25. Oh. You know, so covered. Oh, my. But let's look into this because it specifically said Affordable Care Act. I'm talking insurance in general. I, I didn't see this. So we'll check. But to me, if that's the verbiage, and I know that you're going to be kicked off at 26 years of age, then that means up to 25 is the answer, the general insurance. But let me look into the Affordable Care Act specifically. Can you go to that? Or we can go back to that particular. Oh, that. Let's see. But it says here, children available up to age 26. So the answer should be true with it. That's why I said, okay. Look at this chart though. Go, go up. It says young adult coverage, coverage available to children up to age 26. That's why, okay, the thing that means I'm going to ask hybrid online check on this one, on this particular question. Because so isn't, didn't they answer false? Yeah. But the chart said yes. So, yeah. Okay. Coverage available to children up to age 26 on the chart. Let's read again the question. True or false, in the Affordable Care Act, coverage is available for children up to 26 years of age. I'd say true to that based on that chart. Okay. We'll ask, um, I'll send this question our It's still a brand new like addition. So when we see things like this, we email and discuss like what is it really? Okay. But to me, if they're gonna do it that way, okay, we've seen the chart for the Affordable Care Act, it says young adults up to 26. There's no question on just so you know, in a case, okay, here's a chart up to age up to 26. Okay. But Jordan said, I'm turning 26, I'm going to be kicked off. So, technically, you have to think about that. That's 25 general insurance terms, dependents. Any questions before I move on to? References we use in pharmacy. Okay. I'll jump to the references we use in pharmacy because this is simpler on our packet. Do you see common references, page 21? The one that always comes up on the final exam and PTCE is the orange book, but I will go over everything. So you know, okay? The orange book is a common name, but it is your therapeutic equivalence evaluation. The name of the book itself tells you that 
What? Therapeutic equivalence, correct. So brand and generic. What's the equivalent generic of that particular drug that call, always comes up, okay? So if you're asked what book or what reference is used to know therapeutic equivalence or brand and generic, it'll be your, the orange book. Remember I talked about when I was in pharmacy school, we have this book, which is our textbook slash reference book for pharmacology. That is good men and field men. Right. Technical terms. It's not layman terms. It's just take a book and it's got chemical structures, etc., like the Bible of pharmacology. Right. Another one that I'd like to mention would be the PDR. So this is the PDR. I'll pass around. PDR, in other words, is like a compilation of all product inserts. The one stuck or glued on top of your bottle. Okay, it's like a compilation of product inserts, but not all products are here. Do pharmaceutical companies have to pay to be in there? Yes. It's like a yellow book, right? Out of all the jugs. And that usually, like of course now in a digital form, okay, is a reference used by doctors when they are to prescribe, so say it's a new drug, and they're not yet sure on how to prescribe it or how to dose it, okay? That's the reference they use. But again, like I told you, what's the best reference when you are to check something about the drug, the structure, I mean, what it does, the dosing, which one's the best reference? Package insert. No matter what, it'll be the package insert, no other reference, because the manufacturers wrote that. Put that together, okay? And package inserts are considered monographs. Monographs, Describes or tells information about the drug. So when you're out, is a product package insert considered a monograph? Yes. Anything that has a description of a drug is called a monograph. Is that clear? Next one would be facts and comparisons. Drug facts and comparisons. Get a pretty good library of old books. Of course, books are now in digital format, but I preserved them so that we still know what it looks like. Okay. Just like I still took my son to the library for years so that he knows every week, every Friday, we go to the library and pick up books. Even if we can buy that from Amazon now, so that he knows what a library looks like. Okay. What a library does. Okay. This one is the drug facts and comparisons but it's 2006. What does it do? I told you that in the in the lecture packet. Contains what? What's important here? Also a list of drugs, but it contains OTC products this time. And this is one of my favorite references because anything that's grouped by therapeutic class, I like it. Why, it's easier to find it. If I know what the drug is for, I just go to that particular therapeutic class. That's why this is one of my favorites. Well, it will not be on your finals, but it will be on PTCE. I show that I saw this show up on the PTCE. What's another thing about drug facts and comparison? It contains a section on orphan drugs. I'm gonna highlight that. Alcohol and sugar-free drugs. Disregard like when is it updated? You know that it's digital now. They can update it anytime. It's just a matter of minutes. Okay. But the actual book, of course, takes a while to update. Yeah. Handbook on injectable drugs. What do you think this is about? Oh. There you go. <laughs> injectable drugs. Anything that's injectable. This is your reference. 
And all of this are already in soft copy. This book's uncovering for the <laughs> Identidrug, I talked about this the other day, right? It's, um, you can get it on identidrug.com. Identidrug, what does it do? It identifies the drug by what? Yeah, remember I told you if you picked up a tablet from the floor, it'll have some sort of imprint or numbers and letters combination. You don't know what that drug is because it's on the floor, right? But identity drug helps you identify what that particular is. Tylenol, if it's a cinnamon or benedict, whatever it is, because the imprints are in there. Okay. I'm fine. Okay. Next one. Don't forget about the orange book, though. Red book always comes up. ETC. Red book. What does the red book do? This has a list of. Average wholesale price of drugs and DC number, manufacturer's address. It contains a copy of MedWatch. This also has the pricing for um, how much we charge average wholesale price for um, HIV medications. What do you mean by a couple? What is MedWatch? Think about it. It's MedWatch is a reporting system for adverse drug reaction, right? It is a program by the FDA. It is a voluntary reporting system. In the old days, of course, all forms were paper. So a copy of that form, but now you can do that online. Is that clear? Any questions? I think I've given you all of the major References. Like I said, in the old days, your pharmacies, be it little or big, has to have those um, common references. I, I worked with a lot of doctors who, especially when they want to prescribe the new drug, they would go to their bookshelf, pull out the PDR, and look up the, the correct dosage for the drug. But now everything is in the software, at least. Right? Not an app software. Clear? Any questions? One thing that Camille failed to mention during clinical trials, but I did when I covered it, the blind and the double, the blind test. When it's double blind, who knows? When it's double blind, who knows? No one, not the recipient of the drug or, or the patient or the test population, not the administrator. But it's single blind, who knows? Administrator knows, but the patient or the test um, population doesn't know. Is that clear? Yes, Mark. Does someone like, uh, like watch over that process or no? Remember, there's a group, and I told you it's going to come up on the final exam. So I. I, I R, B was I R B. Investigational review board. You're up on your time. I mentioned that because it will come up on your finals. As that particular one on the PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah. Finals is Monday. Fall finals is Monday. Lab finals is Tuesday. And it's March after that. And on Tuesday, is it? Are that Tuesday, there's a separate drug words and abbreviation final, which is your regular thing. And there's a 150 final, which I've been talking about. I picked up from Ms. J, 
Remember, I added three or four drugs that show up in there. So today is a review for line ethics as you do your IV. Okay. Some things, different parts of this prescription. Let's just do a review on the most part of the terminologies so you guys know. Somebody get the mic. Parts of a prescription. I always do this when we have freshmen. I give them a sample of a prescription. I give them a copy of a prescription. Okay. Of course, we have prescriber's information. I talk about date. A date is not complete without the year. You cannot assume that it's the current year. Okay. Because we have laws governing the validity of prescriptions. Okay. Rx symbol, inscription, subscription, signa, additional instructions, and signature. Sometimes it has patient name for a couple of things. This is what a prescription looks like. If it's a controlled substance, the prescription must have a DA number. The year must have, I mean, the date must have a year. Okay. The address of the patient must be on the prescription if. It's a controlled substance. The old days by law, if it's a C2. Now just stop doctors, it's required. The address of the patient is required with the controlled substance. Okay. Okay. Inscription is the drug. Signa is the instruction for use. What do you call the R symbol? Somebody know? It's in my lecture packet. Prescription. Superscription is the RX symbol. Clear? RX symbol is called superscription. The drug and the strength is the inscription. The signa is the instruction either to the patient or to the pharmacy if it needs to be contaminated. Okay? Because some prescriptions are for the pharmacy first because they need to compound it, right? And then signature of prescriber required? Yes. Office address of the prescriber and uh, phone number required? Yes. Can't be a home address, okay? If it's a C2, pre-printed, stamp, are they okay? No, it has to be ink signed in black. Correct. Okay. Refills. The AW instructions must be there. Okay. Types of prescriptions. Your prescriptions can be in electronic form now. That's acceptable. We call it faxed, though it shows up on your computer or your software. Okay, who has seen a real fax machine one day? Okay. Or they print paper still and then you gone in those days. When you say fax, it's all in our software in our computer system. Okay. A written hard copy from a pre prescription pad, your hard copy, that's still okay. Okay. But remember, I mentioned to you we have rules now, the e prescribing in our state as well, okay, for controlled substances. We can monitor. Telephone or fax prescription. I told you the story about my student. Remember who went so anxious because his externship site has been filling prescriptions that are phone hidden. Like he wanted to call the DEA and the FDA. I said, Were you absent when his teacher at that time? Thought that you can have a telephone, a phone dip, vaccine prescription. There are rules for that. You did law, right? Yeah. So, depending on the state, they can fax in and phone in a prescription, but they still have to send the prescription. How long? Within? Depending on the drug and depending on the state, okay? If you're given an option of 72 hours, choose that one, okay? There are somewhere in one week, depending on the drug too, okay? So 
the option 72 hours is there. It should be 72 hours. It's not on your final, but it shows up on Clear? Verbal orders completed by a pharmacist, description on a patient profile, a transfer prescription from another pharmacy. There are also rules involved in this state by state. Can you transfer a C2? How would you transfer that if it's always a random prescription, right? There's a rule on how many times you can transfer controlled substances as well. You could use C5. You cannot transfer a C2 because there's no refill for C2. They use the transfer. Follow all of the brand new prescriptions. A patient refill request, a partial fill. Patient refill request is depending whether it's allowed still on its balance on, or on patient's balance. Say, for example, um, 12 refills. Right? A patient said, I'd like to get my refill, and the patient is only on the third month. Yeah. But if the patient is out on refills, no matter how much the patient requests, you will have to say that the patient has to see the doctor. That's another one if the refills are done. Okay? You're done to it. Partial fill, they talk about partial fill. It's just right on the prescription how much you fill. This usually happens now because of our out of stock situation, shortage of drugs right now. Okay, an emergency fill. Or it's an emergency fill with a C2 or whatever emergency drug that the patient needs, the ringers. Cash card, then out, but you should not in a hospital setting. That's why you have a cash card. Any questions? Blank of the abbreviation for prescription and should be placed on all prescriptions in the stack for a one one. True or false, the prescription is not to be dropped off at a pharmacy. Can you drop off a prescription? Is it just said prescription? What kind of prescriber is an MD? Doctor of medicine. RX. It then defined on that um, slide that RX holds the prescription. Okay, but we know holds the prescription. Let's do terminologies. Any questions? I just want to cover that just for your practice, you know what's required and what's not required. Yes. So yeah. Pharmacist is the only one who can take verbal orders. You got to remember that. Okay. Good, good question, though. Okay. Remember, we've been talking about, okay, if the prescription doesn't have quantity to be dispensed, is it a valid prescription? Yes, only if you can calculate the quantity to be dispensed. Prescription doesn't have how long will this last, but you have the quantity to be dispensed. Is it a valid prescription? Yes, because you can calculate how long that will last for the total quantity to be dispensed. Okay, doesn't make it invalid. Okay. Okay. The NPI number of the doctor doesn't have to be on a prescription. You can pull that out from your software. Okay. Last terminologies. I know you've seen my flashcards. Jen was asking about it. Ms. L, what's uh what do you mean? <laughs> okay, so let's do legal terminology. I kind of incorporated it as you guys present. Let's do this because you can turn the lights on. Like regulations, what's the, diff what's the difference between regulations, registration, certification? This may come up verbatim on your final exam. Regulations, set up law first. I don't jump. <laughs> law is an overall rule that is passed by, le by the legislative branches of federal, state, and local government to guide conduct. We already know that a law gets approved 
for a little while because they have to discuss that, right? But it's different. It's the legislative body that approves such law before it takes effect. Okay. Sometimes it takes months, sometimes it takes years before it gets approved. You know, as we discussed from the beginning, 1906, how long before the next one gets approved, the next major one. I'm not saying there's no other law that was passed in between that, but when we did the different laws, the major ones we covered. Of course, there are other sub items that are under each law. Okay, but just so you know, it takes months and times years. And the sad part sometimes, or many times, is if nothing bad happens, we don't change that particular law. Remember that says the mind event? Okay. That's why we could do a preventive measure more than a damage control. That's, that's the case scenario. Not always the case, though. What's radiation? Verbatim will come up on your mind. It's a set of written rules and procedures that exist to carry out a law. The FDA sets procedures of how a new drug is approved or unapproved. It's not a law, but it is a regulation. You follow? Standard, again, verbatim, it will come up. It's also in your lecture packages. You may have reported it because of the new outline. With the standard, the guideline. That's why we call it USPS standards. And that the USPS standards 797, these are guidelines for sterile compounding preparation. That's why it's called USP standards. Standards are guidelines. USB 795. This is USB United States Pharmacopeia's standards on how to compound non sterile preparation. Can you follow? So the USB set standards for compounding. Another one, USB standard 1075, compounding with practice. USB standard 800. Handling hazardous material. Can you follow the term standards? Set of guidelines. How to do certain things. Okay. Regulations are your rules, not necessarily laws. Okay. Laws approved by the legislative body. Follow? Ethic. Talk about ethic. Moral dilemma, right? So ethic. Ideas, values, and missions that are held by professionals and individual practitioners. There's a code of ethics for pharmacists, code of ethics for pharmacy technicians or pharmacy practice, whatever. Basically, the what is right and what is wrong. In this case, code of ethics is in your profession or your path. There's a code of ethics for doctors. For lawyers, right? Do you think HIPAA is covered by ethics? Because the code of ethics, confidentiality, right? Talk about adulterated and misbranded already. How do you remember adulterated dirt? Talk about legend drugs. We talked about patents. Accreditation, accreditation. You went through it, okay? In that year. So we had Abhis here. You probably didn't see much, but to see how okay, everything can span, right? For school, it's going to be ASHP, okay? ASHP accredits pharmacy schools, pharmacy training programs. Abhis accredits medical and paramedical training programs. If you're asked by your employer, did you come from an accredited program? What's your answer? Yes, okay. If you're asked on the PTCB, when you're applying for the PTCE, they'll ask you, did you attend an accredited program? The answer is yes. The 
only need one, but we're overachievers. Is that both? Have the answers. So they're the ones who inspect the quality of our education. We always aim that, we always pass out with flying colors, and we always get exceeds expectations, particularly for our program. Okay. This is why, like, oh, um, during that abhess, even the little things. For hospitals, though, who accredits hospitals? You have to know that this comes up on the TJC, the Joint Commission. It's also in your lecture packet that I gave you. TJC. It was written in there as JCO so that you know that they were called JCO, J C A H L. That's not their name anymore. T J C, the Joint Commission. When you hear like everybody's trying to um, make everything nice, um, TJC's coming, the commission's coming, you work in a hospital, that's what it is. They check even the cafeteria menu. That's why I think hospital has one of the best food. Right. Okay. And if you work in a hospital, you're probably going to pay three bucks or five bucks for for a complete meal. And most of the time, pharmaceutical reps bring food for lunch or whatever, and you really don't have to spend much. But you need your badge, or else you need to be an employee to do that. One time, Ms. McGinnis said, "We're going to go inspect this so and so pharmacy." I asked if they're avail available. The they said they can't because Somebody's coming? I said, TJC. No, it's not. It's TJC. It's TJC. And then a day later, she scheduled that. Out. A day later, she said, You're right. It's the TJC. It was the TJC. Okay. Of course, um, pharmacies get inspected not only by the TJC, but by the state board, okay, the DEA. They carry the full substance. But know that accreditation for our school is ASHP and AMHES for hospitals, TJC. The old days, TJC only accredits US hospitals. And now there are TJC accredited hospitals in the Middle East and in Asia. I worked in one. Well, so they set the high standard, just like AMHES for schools. And ASHP for pharmacy training programs, they set a high standard. And now PPCB requires you to have gone to an ASHP accredited program or an EBHES accredited program, but their verbiages must have gone through an accredited training program. They didn't say specific, but if you run the schools, it's either EBHES or ASHP. In the beginning, when they changed it in 2020, it was only ASHP they had to So I was getting pretty excited on the video. And then app has came about to it all. Now you ask me, how come those checks in Walmart, CBS, Walgreens can still take the PTCE? Number one, if they were trained as a tech, tech and training at the stores, this big chains are ASHB accredited. They're training programs. So Walmart had, it has been ASHB accredited for years, Walgreens as well. So they're taught on the job. Okay, that's why they have a tech in training license. Our students who are already working as a tech and in here has to have one training license here and one wherever they're working at. If they work two stores, they have to have one in each. So tech in training license. Another thing, one requirement by the PTCE to take, a PTCB to take the PTCE is, you could be grandfathered in. You didn't go to an accredited school. What was the requirement, remember? Pharmacy manager or a managing pharmacist or who's in charge can vouch there's a testation form that you work how many hours? Yeah. 
They get two years experience. The 500 hours. So the pharmacist can um, sign an attestation that they did that training. So we work around. Because, of course, the ones who are working as a tech already for years and then go to an accredited school, they have to be accommodated. It's, it's changing to be accredited. You have to have come to an accredited program. And that's the reason when you make this a learning experience for you too. Okay, I'm not expecting you to be taxed for a long time. Some of you, like some of my students, wanted became pharmacists, some became nurses, nurse practitioners. One of the things that you look for is There are things that you cannot do if you didn't go to an accredited program or school. And it boils down to either a national certification or a license. Is that clear? Any questions? Next one criminal law versus civil law. It's also in my lecture packet. If I'm right. Criminal law is just between the government and offending parties in the court. But I said it in a different way in the packet. What did I say? Criminal law is against the government. So it's the offender versus the state, offender versus the US government. Okay, that's criminal. Civil law is person versus person. Okay. Person versus person or company versus person. Okay. It's a criminal. The offender is against the state, against the US government, against, against any agency of the government. Same here. The person or group filing a case. Same here. Defendant, the person or group being sued, whom the case is against. Let's talk about Emily's law and a decision. Who's the plaintiff? You think in that case? Plaintiff, the person or group filing the case. The family who was damaged or whose baby died. Defendant, to be a hospital for his first. And then the employees involved, such as the pharmacist, whatever, the pharmacy technician, trying to the treatment department took most of the hit. Okay. But you got to remember, and we thought it was a pharmacy technician initial error. I'm not saying it's just her fault, but that's how it started, right? So she's the one who filled that empty bag with an overdose of NACL. Okay. But in the case of Summerlin Hospital, or this is Shin, it was the pharmacist, correct, who chose on the drop down menu 330 milligrams of zinc instead of 330 micrograms. You see, it's not just technicians who commit the error all the time. But there's a reason why medication errors are called preventable. We've talked about that. There are ways that it can be prevented. Of course, as the FDA and the World Health Organization said, overwork and understaff is one of the major reasons why this is happening. Easier said than done when you're on the end, it's exhausted and has been pulling 12 hour shifts back to back to back to back. But it serves as a lesson for you guys, especially before you go out uh, to pause and check double, triple, bug your pharmacist. And if something feels off, it most likely is off. I've always had that like gut feel. Since I was young. But then when I became a mom, it's like times a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> Three 
reasonable doubt, a doubt about the guilt of the defendant arises or remains after thorough consideration of evidence or lack thereof. Reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt means that he did this. Person just committed. Court, I'll take your packet. Address is wrong that one citizen commits against another to plead due to negligence. Okay, so is tort a civil law or a criminal law? What civil? This person against person. Remember? Civil. Well, tort is usually negligence. And what is negligence? Did I say yesterday? Negligence. Uh, um, ignorance of the law is not an excuse, right? And that can lead to negligence or not caring. That's why when students ask me, Miss L, I'm so nervous to start in the hospital. What do I do? But what do I always say? Think of it as you're dispensing or preparing each prescription to who? The person you love the most. That's it. Care a little. Care a lot. That's what we're missing. Now, health care workers should not lose that. That's why it's called health care. Okay. Negligence. What is negligence? Carelessness, not taking proper care with something. So you think negligence for a decision's case? Yes, you think ne negligence for Emily's law case? Yes, for Emily and for Alyssa Shin, both negligence. And what was the penalty? Fines. Hint, hint, wink, wink, your final exam. What's the penalty for negligence? Fines. Okay. But of course, it's a state by state thing, right? So, revocation of license, suspension of license. In your pharmacy, when it happens, it can either be, um, I'm not talking as big as MD and Alyssa Shin's case, but I'm talking it can be a written warning up to closure of your pharmacy. So, what's exactly, that? Okay. But for negligence, it's fines. Okay. How much? It varies. And when state and federal differ, which one do you follow? Whichever one is more stringent or stricter, that always ends up on the penalty. When you say malpractice, why do you think doctors always have a liability insurance? Why do you think um, lawyers have liability insurance? Okay. Anybody practicing a specific profession, this too, or the biggest one that gets sued all the time. Doctors, whatever practice, okay, malpractice, improper, illegal, or neglectful professional activity or form of negligence. So I have friends who are doctors, and they first they wanted certain specialties or practice. Some became OBGYN, some became um, pediatricians. My friend became an anesthesiologist. I was teasing her. I said, because we were still young, you should marry a lawyer. <laughs> Why do you think I said that? Anesthesiologist, think about it. Surgeons, anesthesiologists. Why do you think I joke about that? How true. <laughs> and jokes are always half men. Half men don't marry it. Okay, anesthesiologists. Surgeons. Always you watched that. I mean, you were in that uh pharmacy board hearing, right? That surgeon <laughs> always gets sued. Poor guy. I'm not saying that he's a bad doctor. I don't know that doctor. But it's just that we live in a country or a town that likes to sue people. Maybe there's proof that he did that malpractice, whatever it is. But it also you also all have to look at both sides of the it's so sad for those people because 
people in our country went to sue for a compensation. What did I tell you about what was paid them? Is it compensation? What is it? <laughs> Punish the offender. Jack, I put that in your lecture packet, not in the hour. What do you call that? The settlement. The settlement. Exactly. Punitive damages. That's your AKA settlement. Follow. Is not something to compensate the victim. But it's to punish the offender. To teach them a lesson so it doesn't happen again. Or try to set up systems like what Summerlin Hospital did, the Rainbow Baby Hospital, they set up systems after that so it doesn't happen again, right? Like they changed their vaccine machine, ordered a new system wherein they'll match now the calculation of the pharmacist based on. Okay. Remember, punitive damages. Settlement is not to compensate. There's no amount of money to replace the life of anybody. Loved ones, the kids, your baby. Well, sad, right? Emily was supposed to be celebrating her second birthday. Supposed to be done. Kids are free. Supposed to go home, have a birthday party. Ended up in the morgue. Alisa, the last attempt, a miracle baby. After two miscarriages, it doesn't matter how much. I don't care how much that money is. I didn't even try to look it up. Right? As a mom, no amount of money. That's why that's usually Sealed information or not out of the public how much the settlement. I always tell you that in a country that has billboard supporters, town at least. So still, you don't have to look at tons. Even if you drive to the freeway, how many lawyer billboards do you have? At least one on each one. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. There's four lawyers on that. In Europe, you have to find a directory I hope it's for lawyers. They're not too heavy. Standard of care. Can't stress this enough. Level of care or established practices commonly expected of a particular kind of health care provider in the local community. Okay. So that's the standard of care. Did we fall short of standard of care with the Alyssa Shin case? Yes, we did. Not just fall short, we fell big time. Did we fall short? And the standard of care in the Alyssa Shin's case? Yes, we did. I can't stress this enough that by health care, it's called health care. Or the use of negligence. It's not going to be tested on this. It's nice to know. I didn't make this. Duty the plaintiff must prove that the defendant had a duty to provide care, their election. Plaintiff must provoke, must prove the defendant was lacking in his or her duty damages. There's actual damage most of the time. That damage is death to that extreme. Okay, but I always say having a person comatose is just as bad. To me, that's worse. If I'm to choose whether to die or to be comatose, I'd rather be dead. I don't want to live as a vegetable. I love vegetables. I don't think you do. <laughs> <laughs> I love 
salad, but I don't want to live like a vegetable. That's why some pharmacists and I joke about there's an add on drugs, new drugs, especially all you see how they say split second what it does, and then the side effects, right? Flavor has to be there. That's it. Oh my God. <laughs> It's always up to death, right? That's why drugs, you got to weigh the benefits and the risks. That's why as a patient, as a person, you have that call still. We've been talking about this ethical dilemma. It's your body, right? So I'm not opposed to Western medicine. If I have to, if a doctor tells me you have to go through surgery, and I know it will help, I will go through that. Right? If I have hypertension, thank God I don't have any maintenance drug at this point, but my friends do. And I'm a healthy person. <laughs> I'm the healthiest and healthy person you'll know according to my friends. Um, if I'll be put on an antihypertensive, I'll take it. Why? Well, that drug has been proven to be very effective for ages. Right? A new drug, maybe I'll think about it. I'll weigh the benefits versus the risk. That's why we also have options. Say, for example, you're written a prescription of a, um, an antihypertensive A. It didn't work for you, but it worked for your sister, your mom. Right? It doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. And then that's when we have options and we change it to maybe a combination. Or maybe first lab tests will be done, blood work will be done, but it doesn't mean that you have the same exact symptoms, it's gonna work the same for you. You gotta remember that. Same is true with your options for supplements. Right? Some people had, I, well, I had chest pain when I started taking those supplements. That's why there's all these disclaimers on the label. Okay? But you make that call, you make that decision. Okay. Direct cause. Damages are directly caused by the defendant's derelict. Um, damages, there's actual damage. So, what is a, what's on the label of a supplement? I didn't have that much time. It's always what? No approved. Therapeutic effect. Um, always consult your physician in that, in that kind of verbiage, okay? Why? There's not a lot of clinical trials on supplements. There's not a lot of clinical trials, not big ones. There's some with like 100 people or 80 people. So when you take supplements, that should be on the label, okay? And be very careful as well taking supplements if you're taking maintenance meds. Like now you know that St. John's word is for Depression, it's a plan. However, if you're already taking an antidepressant prescribed by your doctor, take that. That's the reason the label here. Sometimes you'll get class action lawsuits about a previous job, like asbestos, who works with asbestos. You see that in TV or, or here on radio, or a letter comes in. Did you work for whatever it is, this company or what? Or did you work? with asphalt. So class action lawsuit is group of people with the same like employer or experience on a drug. Okay. Are you on Yaz? Were you on Yaz? And a lawyer represents this group of people. I just want you to picture like, oh okay, yeah. A pharmaceutical company gets to a pharmaceutical company or a pharmaceutical company, especially the big ones, gets sued. Any questions? Let's do a knowledge check. It's good that we go over the knowledge check too. So we see some like adjustments that need to be done. Here. A blank is an overall rule that is passed by the legislative branch, federal, state, and local government. Law. True or false, a standard is ideas of ideas, values, and missions that are held by professionals and individual practitioners. Which of the following terms means addresses wrongs that one citizen commits against another, typically due to diligence? Hmm? 
due to negligence. Okay, let's see. <laughs> There's no answer, so I gotta tell them that, right? <laughs> Law is the correct answer on the first one. The last one would be court, okay? Yeah, but I have to tell them that. <laughs> yeah, so it happens when you have new content. Okay, blind is an overall rule that's bad when you see legislative body. That's so long. Any questions? Okay. You can start putting in your IV hours. Okay. For some of you, you watched the demo video but didn't do anything, you should at least do something now, even just washing of the hands. Okay. Don't watch all of it and not do anything. That's not the way to do it. Watch one. Say, for example, washing of the hands, then do the washing of the hands and record that. Okay. And then watch another one cleaning of the hood, vertical flow hood, horizontal flow hood, two steps, two different ways. Do that. It's another log. You follow? And then the uh, vial. Vial would be next. Manipulation of the vial. Okay. For constitution. Of course, I'm still going to do a demo. But right now, you guys are in different stages. I just gave you calculation packet for IV. It's just math. And then it's one of the first steps that you want to do is to practice pooling, especially if this is the first time you're holding needles and syringe. I joke about it like, you don't like needles? Okay, let me start poking you. <laughs> Any questions? No questions? All of those are in Blackboard. All of those. Yeah. But I picked the ones I used and then I used my lecture packet. A hybrid, though, doesn't have wiggle room. They have to use what's on Black. 